so today the topic we are going to discuss is development and support project overview okay so what are the roles and responsibilities of a development project like if we join in development project what are our roles and responsibilities and if we joined in a support project what are our roles and responsibilities okay so that's what we are going to cover today so first let's take about development project so i will try to explain with my knowledge okay um, it is not exactly same in each and every company but i am giving my knowledge sharing here okay so development project overview so for example you joined in a company and they are taking a project interview for you and you know uh, they are taking into a development project so what they are expecting from you so what will be there you know in the development project okay first of all they will check your skill set okay if everything is matching uh, at least then they will check whether you have any development experience or not okay if you have some development experience they will take into you the you know development project so what will happen when you joining into the project by that time the project may already started and some people are working into in that one or the project is about to start okay so two scenarios it may be so for example if the project is about to start so be, how when how we are going to start a project what are the prerequisites before we start for our technical people because uh, you know this is more about technical things here so for our technical people the project starting means like uh, we feel like okay we need to create some objects okay na? so no one directly go for creation of objects before we start doing some development activities first of all we need to know what we are going to develop okay na? so this comes and as a requirement gathering so what happens when a development is about development project is going to be kickstart okay na? so before that what we are going to do is first part we are what we do is requirement gathering it means our IT team means our leads, managers, whatever, whoever, whoever, they will arrange some calls with the client team. Okay. So there are two teams are there here. One is the client. Other one is our, you know, IT team. Means of a, like we, our TLs, managers and all. Okay. Na? So we will arrange some sessions, means some calls with our client client means not you know not the end user like in from the client yeah what who will be participate in these meetings is functional users okay functional users sometimes you know based upon their uh, you know maybe end user also may participate or may not it is optional okay so functional users are main important so functional users will participate in this meeting and they will provide us the requirements so we are expecting some reports from you because we are talking about a bw projects so it means they are expecting some reports at the end okay so they will give information about okay i am expecting one sales report from you and in this report i am expecting these are the fields like you know um, uh, they will give some structure okay i'm not talking in depth of each and everything so they will provide you some structure like uh, i need information about you know uh, i have some customer you can date and quantity some amount and some derived key figures and all so they will give i am expecting a report sales report and in this sales report these are the uh, fields i am expecting in it so telling the field names doesn't you know uh, we cannot start any development while telling these names they will tell okay this particular customer information quantity information you will get it from some you know vbap table something like that okay they will provide some information about the you know ecc r3 tables also from where we can gather this information or if it is not table they may give some reports in r3 also we may have some already existing uh, you know reports will be there they will tell okay from this report you know already you can go and refer we can uh, we are expecting some quantities some amounts you know some derived key figures like this uh, users uh, our functional users will give provide us the requirement so in the call so we will ask some questions also like if we are not sure you know if they are not not sure from where we can pick this information for example they will say i want to uh, say uh, you know sales count if we are not aware of what is sales count from where we need to you know um, derive this one then we can ask such questions to the functional users they will provide answers to us 
okay once this requirement you know what um what this calls can be called as you know um requirement gathering calls or uh, okay, some other names are there but initial hap what happens we will uh, schedule some calls with the functional users and we will take the requirements from them so once the requirements are gathered we not yet sure how to develop this flow okay for in pw system we always design flow from data source side so from data source is our starting point to bring data from r3 into our bw at this way when these calls are happening we are not sure which data source to use or do we have any standard data sources which we can use and bring this data or do we need to create a new data source you know custom data source all this information we are not aware of when by the time we are having this requirement gathering call once the requirement gathering call is completed and means client provides and fixed okay this is the fixed report uh, no more changes i am going to do this is what i required in bw side if once the user confirms this client confirms this then we go and do them study on this report so as a technical team members uh, what we are going to do now we are we will go to this require we, they will prepare a document the document called uh, called as urs user requirement specification okay user requirement specification or sometimes you know functional specs some people call them as a functional specifications also okay so this kind of document we will prepare by uh, you know as an output of these calls with the clients okay na? so once these uh, document either user urs document or functional specification was completed then as a it people what we do we will uh, study this document and now we try to understand okay these we fields we can bring from these tables so on these tables we have some standard data sources okay we can use some 2ls data source to bring this information into bw and any of the fields which are not coming as part of the standard data source we will think of okay we can uh, bring some enhancements to the existing data source or we bring some other data source into bw and merge this data source okay when coming to sales report they may ask some customer information also here you know such kind of customer master data information can be brought via navigational attributes you know all these kind of you know uh, analysis analysis you know we are not yet developing anything we are performing some analysis based upon this report layout so once this analysis is done if we are sure then we will pre create one technical spec document technical specification document we will prepare okay on top of uh, functional specification document we prepare technical specification document and then once this uh, this is completed then you know we will start developing it okay we will start uh, you know developing the system so if it is a very fresh system now we need to get access to systems uh, so much time it will take but we are not discussing those points i am talking about the how the development project is you know drive from starting to ending so initial functional where we will have some calls with the functional users to get the requirements on top of requirements they will provide this urs document we don't prepare this document the you know responsibility of creating this urs specification is by the client only so client prepares this document they will provide you know hand over this document to our it team then we are going to prepare some technical specification document on top of it then we will start development so you know based upon this requirement also after preparing you know after we do some analysis and pre uh, you know preparing this technical spec we will provide the timeline also so this particular uh, uh, flow we need this much of time to create so timelines also will be agreed before we start development itself we will agree with client about the timeline also for example user have a requirement of to create 200 reports we don't start 200 reports at a time okay we will first of all split these reports into multiple phases for example 50 50 50 something you know different uh, categories or else uh, we will prioritize we will ask user prioritize you know important uh, reports in just a second some network issue i think it will reconnect mm. meantime you know we can continue so what we do we will ask the user 
to prioritize the 200 reports which they needs you know uh, in the priority mode once they prioritize the reports then from the prioritized reports we will you know again few take few and provide timelines for them and then we will start you know implementing those uh, uh, one second uh, So, um, so we will, uh, you know, out of 200 reports, we will ask the client to prioritize the reports and then we will take the, the first few, few reports and we will prepare project plan also. That is also important before any development starts. Okay, before any development starts on system, it is mandatory to provide a project plan, project plan to client. Okay, so they will expect this. For example, 200 reports, if this is their requirement, we will prepare a project plan for the 200 reports. Like we will split this of 200 into phase manner. For example, first 20 reports, one phase. Next we deliver 50 reports. Next we deliver another 50. And final, you know, remaining uh, reports will deliver in the last phase. So this first phase, may be, we may take, you know, six months of time, five months of time based upon the, our project plan. We will pre prepare a project plan for the requirement and once project plan is completed, we are, we must be strict to this project plan. Okay. So if we agree that we will deliver the first 20 reports in the first five months, then we must be strict to this requirement and, uh, you know, we must show progress day by day also. Okay. So this is how the project development project will go on. Initial project requirement uh, gathering, requirement gathering call, preparing, uh, getting the URS documents from the client, then preparing technical spec on top of it, then starting development. You know, technical spec is only, you know, to understand the basic for the starting. Once you started development, you may get some hiccups, you know, you may get, you, you may not, you may not able to, you know, get some information what expected. At that time, again, you may do some extra developments to it, which is not available in the technical spec. In that cases, what happens when the development is completed, uh, you know, we will re-update the technical specs at the end. Okay, so let's go for further step. So once the development, for example, you understand the report development and you completed end-to-end -end development of it. So what next you are going to do? Next you are going to perform unit testing. Okay. Next you are going to perform unit testing. Means you are going to perform some testing on your developments like loading data from R3 into B develop R3 into your BW system and doing some data loads and then doing some validation. So if they are saying that, you know, my data, for example, if report contains, you know, document number, you know, quantity. So this quantity, they said it is available under some ECC under one table. So now you are going to compare this quantity in the R3 system with your quantity in your BW system. If both are matching, then your unit testing is passed. So this kind of testing you are going to perform, you know, after your development is completed. Once unit testing is completed, if you are sure, then what happens? Then we will move our objects to the tra means the transports, transport to quality system. So once your unit testing is completed, if you sure that your developments are working as expected, we will move our transports. Transports means objects to the quality system. Okay, once the, your objects, your data flow is available in the quality system, then in quality system also, you are going to perform some data loads and then you do one more data validation. It is your responsibility to perform one more data validation in the quality system. Why it is required? Why? Because generally, if you take our landscape, we have development server, we have quality, quality system and then maybe directly production if we take only three layers are there okay in development system you may not have proper sufficient data to perform all your test cases okay all your testings you cannot conclude because of lack of test data in the development system but in the quality system what happens we definitely we may have you know at least 70 percent data quality means uh, what happens is generally before we perform any star this kind of projects now we copy some of the production data into quality server okay so that quality system have is having proper data to perform all your validations that's why it is mandatory for you also to perform some kind of testing in quality system 
once you feel like okay in quality system your developments are working as expected then you will inform to user okay i am ready for for the um, final test that is nothing but uat okay user acceptance test because user is going to use your reports at the end so they must confirm that okay whatever you developed is working as expected as they required you know requirement so that part is nothing but uat so they will perform this uat in the quality system not on the unit development system okay because quality system is having proper data to perform their validations okay so that's why after transporting to quality system if you give immediately to the uat it is not correct because you know um, the testing whatever you did in the development uh, may not give 100 percent results but when you do try testing on quality system you will get to know you know what is happening that's why again you perform unit testing in the quality system so after that we will provide for uat without doing proper unit testing in quality system if you provide the report to that uat then you know what them what they feel is if there are some uh, bugs in your da in your uh, data flow they feel like okay these people doesn't know how to implement our you know report this kind of negative feedback may come for that reason first of all it is important you do proper testing before you give the report to the uh, you know user user testing that's why uh, it's an important point that's why i'm you know um, stressing multiple times this one so once you provide you the report to the user for the testing they will perform their validations and if they found any bugs in the report they will let you know okay i have this value is not coming as expected i am expecting something but this there is something so they will uh, you know provide you the uh, you know proof also so from r3 system they will show you okay this is the value what i am expecting from r3 but your report for example if it is 50 and your report is showing 40 so which is not correct then what you need to do you need to do some some data validations so you need to check uh, how you are fetching from develop you know r3 in your data flow so this is nothing but bug fixing so you will do some bug fixing and you will recorrect the report and again provide it for the uat so once users are satisfied with the results of your report then they will give the sign off okay they will give the sign off for the production goal for production moment Okay. So then once this UAT sign off is completed, then we will transport our objects, objects to production environment. Okay. So once project, uh, once our uh, objects are in a production environment, then immediately users doesn't use the report. After we move it, then we need to perform data loads to our, uh, you know, uh, our models. Okay. Our data flow. So what this called as a goalie. So this particular, uh, not goalie, not goalie. So transports to production and environment will happen. So moving transports to production is not a goalie. Okay. This is only production moment. Once production moment has happened, then you have to perform data loads to your data, uh, to your uh, flows, data flows. Okay. Na? Once data loads are completed, again, we perform one more time testing here. Okay. Um, yeah, it's working now. Just a second. One second. Oops. Uh, so uh, we perform testing one more time we perform some testing because production system contains 100 percent you know uh, proper data so that's why again they will functional users who will do te use uh, testing here our functional user do one more time data validation in production system and once they feel okay this is uh, working as expected then we call it uh, then we uh, we go for go like actually all these dates will be fixed prefixed okay na? before this go live date functional users will do some testing and make sure it is working as expected 
then by the go live time our report will be 100 so what is go live go live means you know whatever reports we are using those reports will be you you know uh, testing will be done by functional user but the end users of this report is nothing but client side end users okay there will be hundreds of users will be there uh, you know maybe maybe hundreds of users will be there who will use your report so whenever we are giving this report to hundreds of users now then that time we call it as a go live okay but before we are before we release our report to the 100 users access now first we do perform our testing from our side means uh, 10 to 20 people from the client team will perform testing on your uh, reports and they will check do the data validation okay so once go live is completed from the go live time we call it as hyper care okay what is hyper care after go live what will happen once the go live is uh, is done once the go live is done uh, all the 100 200 users will start using your report so when they are because they they are using this report from different different areas so they may find some issues you know uh, in our report because before your report is published they do the same activity manually or in some other way it means they have some other you know way of validation now they will check their reports with your go live report if both are not matching then they will come up okay this is not coming as expected then they won't come to you that is important okay all the end users doesn't come to you you know for uh, you know for any issues they will reach out first to the functional user functional user will try to explain them okay this is how the report functionality and all so even if the end user convinces functional user that this is not the expected you know uh, uh, way of working then functional user will reach out to you okay there is some other bug is there we need to fix it so whatever we do on hypercare that is nothing but you know we need to support that hypercare period by doing the bug fixing means again we do some developments on the existing one and do the fixes and again move the changes to the production system okay this hypercare period is very critical we need to fix the issues very fast okay so once the hypercare is completed finally what happens we will give this sub, uh, solution for the support for example whatever 20 reports you you designed and went go live now these 20 reports now will be under support uh, track it means any issues happened any further issues identified on these 20 reports you are not responsible team. it means a development team is not responsibility for the any uh, further issues identified in your 20 reports so in parallel we will have some support team which supports you know these 20 reports now support team will do the further analysis on the 20 maybe they can they can take help from you to understand uh, you know about the report but generally for support team will take responsibility of to resolve any issues identified you know after the uh, support uh, support handover so what is support handover support handover is nothing but development team will provide kt because these people developed these 20 reports right so these people will provide knowledge transfer to the support team you know this is how we designed this report this is the user requirement and they will hand over this uh, urs document and technical document to the support team and they will give complete kt knowledge transfer so once this knowledge transfer is completed from after the hyper care is completed any issue came on these 20 reports that will be taken care by support team okay so from this time support team responsibility starts you are you are done with your successful goal eh? from now support team will take care of further things if any further issues are there okay so let's take some pass so once the develop once the hyper care is completed we are hand over it to support team then that calls as a project closure okay what closure development project closure okay so when we take this project plan the project plan is still from your uh, you know development from requirement gathering till the hyper care so this part comes as your project plan so it, this must be happen as part of your you know within the timelines we agreed in the project plan okay so one point here is there are two development projects are there okay there are two kinds of development projects are there so one development project is uh, from scratch okay this this uh, we call it as a greenfield implementation also 
greenfield implementation so what is greenfield implementation greenfield implementation is nothing but if a client is having you know he doesn't have sap system earlier okay they for example they may use earlier oracle systems and oracle sql reports okay sql reports and first time they bought sap and they are migrating their data oracle data is to sap r3 okay and they are expecting some reports in bw okay then this kind of project we call it as a greenfield implementation it means client till now doesn't aware of any sap uh, you know sap doesn't have any sap system first time they bought sap and they are implementing all their solution which is in a different technology into our into sap bw and r3 then we call it as a greenfield implementation okay so this is one kind of implement development project and another kind of development project is client already have sap r3 system with with them and sap bw also okay now they have a requirement to implement a new solution okay for example they have already sales reports you know and uh, now they till now they doesn't have any you know uh, plant maintenance reports so a new for example till now the sales reports are there for you know um, U us for us okay till now they have a solution which is implemented for us country it means whatever bw reports are there those reports are taken care only you know used within the us country now they are uh, they are you know uh, improving um, what means i forgot the term um, so they are uh, evolving their business uh, and jumping into uh, some other country called germany okay now what they need same report they cannot use it for germany also there may be because in in us they may have a different report structure and in germany they may expect a different report structure okay because taxes and all different from us to germany so they may have a different products in germany same product it is not mandatory to sell in germany also right something else whatever may be the reason now they are having their business in germany and they need some reports to be built on this uh, germany data okay now this is a new development now this piece of development may comes to you as a development project to you to your company okay so in this case what happened it is not a greenfield implementation they are already having sap system and you are implementing a new flow new data flows in the existing bw system so this is also a, a development kind of project okay so for example if they are already having uh, uh, sap systems so what this sap system will be supported by some 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 other client or uh, some other uh, you know it company or same your company uh, you know supports the existing environment so that's it uh, so i don't want to uh, elaborate much so there are two kinds of development projects are there one is greenfield implementation another one is a development project which is you know enhancement to the existing developments okay so both are nothing but development projects only so in this case what happens when you are working on this existing development projects you may need to utilize the existing master data info objects existing flows and all so when you design your technical specs you will design by keeping in mind of existing developments but in this case in the greenfield implementation when you are preparing your technical specs you need to you know you need to build each and everything from scratch means you they don't have at least one info object which is already existing one but in the existing you know in, in the right side one they may already have customer master data middle master data all info objects used okay uh, so this is about this one and next thing is so in this particular in this greenfield implementation when they are moving their objects into production system for example uh, this is production below is production system when they are moving their objects into production system they no need to bother anything because the production is empty box their production box is empty first time they are moving objects so they they happily they can move it but in this case what happens which is already they have existing production system so into the existing production system when you are moving your objects newly developed objects into the your production system you know what happens you must be very very careful 
okay when you are transporting objects of your new development into production system your new developments will not impact existing you know existing objects in the production system okay so to handle this we call there is some you know some activities will be there those called as pre cutover activities pre cutover activities and the post cutover activities whenever any developments moving from quality from uh, you know existing qual development quality to production before moving our objects to production we perform this pre cutover post cutover activities we will discuss this pre pre and the post cutover activities in a separate session okay i am not going to you know work on this but uh, the, when we when these activities come means uh, when we are moving objects from development system into production system okay our quality to production so this is important pre and post cut this is also a part of your project plan okay uh, here there won't be nothing but in this case when you are developing some project plan for your new development you must consider this pre and post cut or activities also as part of your project plan that is what important here okay and uh, next is uh, that's it uh, this is what, what overall about development project overview okay no? i am stopping recording and let me just message me some other questions.